When we left our home over a year ago to drive the Americas, we thought we'd mostly be alone on the road. The Panamericana has taken us through some spectacular landscapes so far. Hola! <laughs> but it also has led us to meet other travelers like us. We're definitely not traveling at the speed of light, but somehow time seems to slow down. Every experience becomes more intense and more memorable on the road. Friendships sprout faster and relationships are compact. A week on the road feels like a month. Our backgrounds, differences, and histories all become secondary. Where we are and what we are doing in the immediate present is what really matters. As it should. We don't really know each other all that well, but there's something beautiful about sharing the warmth without worrying about our differences. The road has a way of teaching that to every traveler. We all decided to stick together for a while through the famous Laguna route, a demanding remote region of the Bolivian Altiplano. We started on Salar de Uyuni, the largest salt flat in the world and probably one of the weirdest places to drive a vehicle on. Vincent and Sidonie are driving a 1985 Volkswagen Kombi. Michael and Claire are traveling in an Iveco motorhome with their three children. We are on a Toyota Tacoma. With such different vehicle characters, we appear to be a perfect match for a tough expedition. We camped early in the day near one of the islands of the Salar. The wind was so strong, it inspired us to invent a new extreme sport. Parascooting. We all took turns sipping over the salt flats using our homemade sail. This was followed by a mini petanque tournament. The temperatures on the Salar drop significantly at the end of the day. At night it goes below zero. It's hard to remember that you're surrounded by salt and not snow. The Swiss felt at home here and brought out a big chunk of Swiss cheese and a fondue set. This was the last luxury we all enjoyed before leaving the Salar and heading into the dirt roads of the Bolivian Highlands. But not before taking a few traditional Salar photos, of course. It says to follow the left line over here. The other one is going to a town. Our GPS said to the left a little bit also. Fuel can be a problem on a 600 kilometer long route without gas stations and on dirt road. We used every opportunity to fill our tanks. We just stopped at the store that sells gasoline and uh, it was my mistake, I didn't put a like, t-shirt or anything like that while I was pouring the gas. So we have seen uh, two pieces of gunk going into the fuel tank. Um, we are a bit concerned that it may actually clog the fuel filter or the injection system. But there's nothing to do at the moment. We're just going to go ahead to San Pedro de Atacama and 
hope that we don't have any problems. Anyway, we're four now. Uh, Barbara and Urs joined us. They're also from Switzerland, so the Swiss are in majority now. We are 4,140, something like this. We climb 100 meters almost. But actually, we are 4,150 almost. Because I checked before, it was 4,200. Okay. And the GPS say that we are 25 kilometers from, uh, from Alota. Alota. So the, what is that, an hour or two? Yeah, it will be an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So go, ta, 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 ta. or I don't know, maybe ta, 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 ta. And, uh... The combi had some trouble on deep sand sections. We all took turns pushing it out. Vas-y, 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 vas-y! My glasses are so dirty, I can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> Finding a store to restock food was not easy. When we arrived in Alota, we came across a mobile store. This town was also a point of temporary separation. The two-wheel drive vehicles were going to take an easier road while Barbara, Urs and us took a more scenic one. We promised to meet each other in Laguna Colorada in a day or two. The road we took was more difficult indeed, but it was well worth it. It took us through remote regions close to the western border with many volcanic peaks, rivers, lagoons and flamingos. Almost 5,000 meters, it was by far the coldest night we'd ever spent on this journey. Tara somehow managed to feast on the remains of an unlucky Vicunia in the morning. As soon as the sun warmed the air, we started heading south again. Once more, we were surprised to find other travelers heading the same direction. After a brief introduction, we started driving together towards Laguna Colorada. It's nice we meet them. Once there, we just needed to meet up with the other group, but it wasn't easy. The laguna was not only very large, but also very windy. This is 
is an incredibly windy place. It's not possible to meet the others uh, where we were supposed to meet. But we were just able to spot them with the binoculars. We're gonna try to catch them and uh, lead them to a less windy camping spot. starter relay or starter whatever so he's gonna he's in the middle of it he can't move now and we have to find a place to camp today so worst case they're gonna stay together and if he's able to fix it they're gonna keep on coming to the canyon once we were camped at the canyon all the other vehicles showed up one after another all six rigs spent the night together decided to team up with the French, heading towards one of the highest border crossing posts. The combi did pretty well in these hard sections, except the old starter problem and a few sandy ditches. But there was always someone to help behind. A thermal spring along the road proved to be a lifesaver. We were all looking forward to heat our bones and soak in water after almost a week in the cold and dust. We enjoyed it till the last hours of daylight. The next morning we found ourselves in one of the most surreal scenes on the route. The Dali Desert. These huge rock piles in the middle of sand dunes create an otherworldly scene. We pushed the combi once more towards Laguna Blanca, the last lagoon of the route. We camped next to the ruins of a building and tried to explain to Tyler what to do with the frisbee. We'll keep trying later. So um, today is the last day of the Laguna route and uh, I, I don't even remember how many days we had like maybe four or five days including the uh, Salar de Uyuni and it's been I think it's gonna be about like 500 550 kilometers in total it's a tough road um, I mean not in terms of the four-wheel drive most of the sections are doable on two-wheel drive mm. But I think the difficulty was mostly the wind and the dust and the temperatures, freezing temperatures, below freezing temperatures. Uh, we survived it. Um, now we're going to be crossing into Chile. We all feel very tired. The idea of a hot shower and an indoor bed seems very appealing at the moment. Most of the trip has been between 4,000 and 5,000 meters. And we, ha we all have like cracked lips because of the sun and the cold, the wind. I think we're all tired. Having cooked every vegetable and eaten every fruit in the trucks, we were almost ready to do the border crossing between Bolivia and Chile. But there was one more important detail. We had bags of coca leaves with us and did not know if they were allowed on the Chilean side. Well, there was only one solution. The 
boarding post is a little shack run by one guard. He was happy to see us and stamped out our passports with ease. Almost immediately after the border crossing, we descended more than 2,000 meters to warmer climate. At the end of the road, everyone met in San Pedro de Atacama. The hardships were only a prelude to this happiness. All the moments we shared will be ingrained in our memories along with the wide open landscapes of Bolivia.